Hello, progression tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 1 Dawn of Souls with the mod of Balance and me, Blue Ankylo. Uh, last episode, we <laughs> did a lot of shopping. We got some mithril gear and uh, pimped out our characters a bit, which is fun. We learned some new spells, and we're gonna go head on into the Earth Cave today to finally make some progress. Now, I have a feeling our levels are a little bit low to be going terribly far, terribly quickly. Um, but we also need to double check the treasure chest because part of the mod of balance is rebalancing um, the items you can get. So we will be doing a little bit of diving down here into some treasure chests, um, seeing what's new. What's better? I mean, for the most part, when you're playing on the NES, you just skip the majority of these chests because they uh, they just have money and stuff that you don't really need. The difference is, in this version, you actually need that money, so that's not bad. Uh, and also, some of them might be randomly switched to be something useful besides money. Um, also, let's fight an Earth Elemental. See how strong they are. <laughs> yeah. This is probably a terrible mistake, but... I think Dia will work on elementals. We'll see. 43 damage. Technically, it does damage. Luckily, Stone Gas didn't hit anybody. Okay, so I did know ahead of time that that would be a, a potential problem. Um, so basically, if that takes effect, uh, you get it could theoretically turn the entire party to stone in one move. Uh, and the only way to cure stone, as I learned, is at this point in the game to have uh, remedies. So that's why I spent all that money on the remedies earlier. Um, and you actually have to use it in battle. You can't use it from the menu, which is kind of weird. I thought it was a bug when I first uh, realized that um, once one of my my cast one of my characters was turned to stone, I'm like, well, I don't have anything. To, I don't have any soft needles. I don't have any. Uh, uh, the spell soft, it was like level 6 magic in the original game. Like, how the heck am I supposed to handle so uh, stone? Well, they sort of made a way around it in the mod. I I'm not sure why they did it like that, but... Um, these guys are hitting pretty hard. The main thing I always worry about is Meliar. Everyone else seems to have good enough defense. But I, I am going to do a little bit of speeding up every now and then just to, to save a little bit of time. Definitely get a lot more bang for our buck when we heal with Meliors MP. Probably what I'll do here is clear out the first floor of the Earth Cave, and then um, we'll probably use a, we'll go outside and use a tent to heal up. It's also kind of MP efficient to use the Pain spell uh, because it's very cheap and does not that much worse damage than uh, the Elemental spells. I do believe one of the main things for the mod of balance is they made it a lot more fighting earth elemental again, why not? It's not like the last one almost killed everybody with a spell. Um, actually, I should have checked his weaknesses to see if he's weak to anything. Like, I know Dia works, but it doesn't do that much damage. I think he's strong to ice. Zeal increases his attack, that's uh, theoretically concerning. Just gonna burn through some MP here. 72 damage. Not, not as much as I was worried about. Earth Elementals traditionally hit very hard and uh, have enough HP to be kind of a pain. Uh, let's just have a look at their stats because I'm curious in this mod. Earth Elementals. So they can drop good stuff. Knight's Armor is worth a ton of money. That'd be great. And they are in fact weak to poison, interestingly enough. So if you could get level 5 magic, Scourge would work. Interesting. Interesting. Poison works on Hill Gyguses. Yeah. Alright, there's some good stuff if we learn the new spells. Um, for now, we need to continue to not die, so let's heal up a bit. I bet you're glad I bought all that armor now. Look at all that defense that we need because the enemies hit so hard down here. So yeah, some of these enemies you may recognize from last episode. We saw them in Crescent Lake. Um, ooh, basically one-shot Smelliar. That's not good. So if they can do 107 damage to Melior, and he's got 108 HP, we got ourselves a problem. Uh, <laughs> that's great. 
Sure is good that you can buy uh, Phoenix Downs in this game. <laughs> uh, it'd be a trip all the way back to uh, Elfland, basically, to find a uh, clinic to resurrect in the NES version. Should probably just be using potions to heal. MP is a little bit too precious to spend on healing right now. That's kind of the problem when you don't have a dedicated white mage. It's like all of Meliar's MP is like, I should probably use it for offensive magic. Oh good, the silence touch gargoyles. I love this. Look at this, the whole friggin' party silence. I mean, at least mind bombs, they're really not that expensive, but... I don't like using consumables every random encounter. Let's fight an Earth Elemental again. Here you go. Eventually someone's gonna get put to, uh, turn to stone. <laughs> well, the fire spell is, is definitely doing some damage, so that was the smart way to, to kill these guys. I'm really hoping they'll drop some Knight's Armor. That'd, that'd be awesome. Also, level ups. You know, that's always good. Look at all the stats. Um, let's get... So, the reason Melior and Victus are not leveled up is they've both died... Well, it might not have been on camera, I forget. But, uh, they, they have definitely died, so... Zealing himself. Protectora, hmm. He's got some interesting spells that I didn't know he would have. Alright, well hopefully Meliar can get a 200 experience on the way out of the Earth Cave. This'll probably do it. I don't think snakes are specifically weak to any elements. But burning them tends to work, alright. As long as you get that, as long as he gets uh, intelligence up for every level up, I'll be amazingly happy. Because he just keeps getting more more magic damage with that intellect. Okay, one floor done. Barely. That's... This is definitely a more difficult dungeon in the mod than it was in vanilla. Uh, well, no. I mean, to be fair, in the NES version, this was a pretty scary dungeon. Uh, the mod of balance is more about making the Dawn of Souls version closer to the original, which was a scary dungeon, like I just said. Alright. Let me out. Let me out. Good. So, uh, let's throw down a tent. Heal up. Uh, MP is back. They're level 14 now. You know what? Before we go further down, just for fun, I always like to show this off when I'm, uh, going through the Earth Cave. Um, it's probably not necessary for this party or anything. Stupid tarantula's not dying to one pain. Um... So, basically, over here on the left side of uh, the first floor, there's a little loop, and it's full of hill gigases, or giants, and lizards, or iguanas, whatever you want to call them. And this is actually a pretty good place to grind, if you really want to grind. Um, I've definitely done it before. Maybe not in the mod of balance, per se, but these fights aren't terribly difficult, and you're pretty close to the exit. So you can just get out, use a tent, and save, and heal up, and all that. Uh, I don't think we're gonna really grind. I mean, we're still like thousands of experience away. Um, two heal gigases will be more efficient. Um, but uh, what I what I need for this to be efficient is to have a spell that kills the heal gigases in like one round or something. Um, and pain is certainly not that spell, although it's it's good for MP. Um, I think they said they were weak to poison, so if you can get to level 5 black magic first, and then come here, uh, you could probably wipe them out pretty efficiently with that. Elven Bomb. That's not even really a, a, the drop that we want. Um, so unfortunately grinding against the giants, um, oh, Hyena Dons. Power plus, that's nice. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately... You know, that's not a very handy drop. And yeah, uh, they're weak to poison and quake. So yeah, theoretically, uh, you could bring some spells in and just wipe them out. Uh, Jade can learn level 4 magic, so we'll probably want to get Jade, uh, Blizzra, and something else pretty soon. Looks like Jade probably learns spells just like one or two levels later than uh, Meliar does. Yeah, let's fight like one more of these fights, just... I don't know. Just cuz. 
I'll I'll go a little bit more all out with the magic this time. So let's see. Lizera should do a little bit higher damage to the Hill Gaius by base. Not that much different. So we still can't really kill one in a single round easily. Eh. Not really a, a big deal. I just wanted to show it off and see uh, if I had any good luck. Technically, the most dangerous encounters we could fight are actually in the Peninsula of Power, which is northwest of uh, Provoca. I guess if I had Dira, this would be good for this spell. Or this, this encounter. They did pretty... They're actually not that strong. Like, they don't have a lot of HP, those gargoyles. They're just annoying with their uh, silence. Alright. Anyway, enough messing around on the first floor. Um... We're not going to grind on giants. If they had, like, a good item drop, I might have thought about it. In the NES version, when you go up or down stairs, you start the next floor on the staircase. So you can just hold right, and uh, you immediately leave. You immediately go to the right. Uh, in the remake, of course, as you can see, they put you to the left or below uh, one of the entrances. Or to the right sometimes. So it's, it's really easy to remember. Uh, is this... I remember if this is the efficient way down. So this run, we're going to try to make it all the way to the vampire. So I need to be a little bit more efficient on my MP. Uh, if we get into a bind, we can always warp out fairly easily. But, um... Sorry, I'm a little bit lost. I don't usually take this route. I've, I've gone the wrong way. What kind of professional Final Fantasy 1 player are you, Blue? Not that professional. But, uh, yeah, normally I should have just gone to the top right like always and then gone to the bottom left. I know the route a lot better. But yeah, I'm definitely going to check the treasure chests because we need the money, we need the gear. And, um, look, I'm in the top. I'm going to get to the top right anyway. Fine. Minotaurs! More defensive than I remember them. Not dying easily. This fight might not be worth my time now. Wolves are rarely the most valuable encounters, so... Yeah, it's not very good. Coral Sword. Tent. So the Coral Sword is probably not very good. Extra damage against aquatic foes, but there's not a lot of aquatic foes that are in... The, um, the Marsh Cave. It's not a bad sword, comparatively. Like, for pretty much anyone, it would do more damage against aquatic foes. But it's not, it, you know, I don't care about the accuracy that much, so. Unless there's some secret fish that live in the Earth Cave that I don't know about. This ambush is getting pretty old. I could try to run away, but they get so many attacks, I feel like it's it's not worth it. Because if we fail the run, then we're wasting a lot of turns with the enemy just wailing away on us. Now let's just use potions. We'll save our MP for dangerous encounters. And we'll get immediately poisoned. I feel like status inflictions are, like, more likely to connect in this mod. I have to do this encounter twice. Maybe I'm actually going to warp out of here and use another tent before I go down to the vampire. The encounter rate is not being kind. This is kind of my issue. Eh, maybe we'll be alright. Oh man, so many gargoyles. We're gonna run out of mine bombs at this rate. I mean, I did buy like 20, but... Leather shield, just what I always wanted. All right, we can get through another one of these. We're, we're doing okay. As long as I save enough MP to fight the vampire and warp out afterwards, we'll be fine. Good job, Jade, killing that Earth Elemental. 
I'm still going to take these fights because I kind of want the experience to end. I'm pretty sure most of these enemies have a chance at a good item drop. We just haven't seen any today, but they do exist. Alright. I feel like the encounter rate has gone a bit nuts, but that's okay. It's, it's always when you're in a rush where the encounter rate is the worst. And I'm like, I gotta get through this dungeon today. I can't just have a shopping episode again. Wow, Melior just getting crushed. Yeah, those uh, Minotaurs, def I gotta find, like, so far I have to say, of the four classes, like, just to give a quick review, Victus the Knight, he's fine. I mean, it's, it's good to have someone up front that's got good defense and uh, good attack power. The thing is, like, so did the other two. So it's not like he's uniquely defensive. Uh, it would be better if he was strong in defense and also had some magic. So, okay. Beret the Ranger, he's okay. He learns his magic levels a little bit slow. But he's a good support, and he's also quite defensive. I could have put him in the front row, he would have been fine. Like, Beret would be a fine Victus, he just doesn't deal as much damage. Jade seems pretty awesome. Does a lot of damage, has a lot of magic. Black magic. And honestly, Melior is like the weakest link because he gets one shot by everything. And you just can't equip anything on him to give him defense right now. And I always say this about like red mages in Final Fantasy 1. Because they have to choose from 8 spells per level, it's, uh, it's really hard to define their role um, in, in battle basically. Like, you want to be using your MP effectively. Um, white mages tend to save it for healing and, and bringing the party back. Uh, black mages tend to focus more on, on nuking enemy groups. Um, anytime you've got a character that learns both black and white magic, you have to find some sort of a compromise. Um, and that gets tricky. <laughs> I mean, if I don't use offensive magic with him, he basically does nothing in battle. He just sits there and, and he smacks things with his staff for 5 damage, or not even that. Um, but if I blow all this magic on casting Fyra and, and all the, the good spells, then uh, he's not going to be able to use the, the, the healing spells later on when we need them. So we shouldn't be able to flee from this fight, so we're going to have to take it. I guess the good news is the wizard, Pisco demon type things... Uh, they're easier than Minotaurs, so in, in groups of two, it's no big deal. I guess Holy Water's a new item as well. Hope they don't kill Meliar here immediately. Just stun touch. Come on, we can kill two Wraiths without needing to use spells, right? Um, stunned again, Mind Bomb. I sh I'm gonna have to bring more uh, Mind Bombs in the next dungeon. Uh, is there... What am I thinking? There's no... There's no... There's no treasure up here. Oh, the stun touch. You know, my biggest problem with all the status ailments... It's it's not so much that there's a lot of enemies that inflict them. It's that the mod changes them to be persistent after combat for everything. And it means there's a lot of menuing. Like, I'm going... I have to go every, every battle into the menu to maybe heal up and also to cleanse all the status effects. And, uh, I don't know why I stood here. This was a terrible idea. I'm, I've killed enough of these guys. We need to start running away. Um, you probably can't run from Earth Elementals, depending on how the mod's done it. But traditionally, these are unrunnable. Um, what was I saying? So, like... I, I almost like the fact that, like... Thematically, statuses are more frustrating when you can't just cleanse out of them automatically at the end of battle. So it's kind of appropriate for an old school D&D style game to be like, no, you're poisoned. You, you can't just heal immediately after combat. Um, I like that. But um, when everything is like that, and now you've been stunned, you've been confused, you've been silenced, yada, yada, yada. And now you have to go into the menu after every, basically every every combat to, to, to use an item. Um, I don't know, I just, it gets, I guess the problem is more because I'm less playing and I'm impatient. I want to 
make some progress today and not spend the whole episode and not even make it to the, the nearest, uh, the next boss. I'm going to be very low on MP for this vampire fight. So cockatrices always scare me a bit because they are, um, they usually have stone touch or at least the, uh, the ability glance. Still no level five magic. Um, I'm just going to check if there's anything interesting out of them. Cockatrice. Uh, cockatrice Claw. No weaknesses, but strong to earth, which makes some sense. Very low HP, so that's that's good, and not a lot of magic defense. They should be easy to kill, but stone is such a terrible status ailment in this, in this mod um, that I would really do almost anything to avoid it. I like how Melior took twice as much damage from magic as the knight did. You know, the guy that should have the best magic defense there is, the pure magician. 14 damage. Yeah, I mean, I like having all the magic options. I just, I think he's the weakest class in this group by a fair margin. Um, I guess we're ready. Probably should save it, just in case something goes terribly wrong. Alright, all things in this world are destined to end in death. The seal cannot be broken. Well, we'll see about that shortly. Mere mortals cannot kill the undying. You're just lucky I don't have harm three. Alright, vampire, we got boss time. Now, I don't know if vampires get magic spells in this mod. They might. But we're going to pretend he doesn't have any spells. And if he kills us all, then we learn something. Let's get some fire in there. He should be weak to fire. Okay, Gaze is uh, stunned, I think. Not too bad. So the fire 2 is doing a lot of damage, as it always does. He regenerates 30 HP per turn. He's definitely got a bit of a buff. And now my pure mage has no magic. Oh, we could throw some holy water on him. That'll be fun. I think it casts uh, uh, Dia, Dia Ra, yeah, so it's actually doing a lot of damage. Good deal. I almost forgot that I got a couple of those from drops. Hey, Vampire is gone. Star Ruby is get. Uh, I'm not, I want to get out of here, but there's a, a, a staircase to the north of this room that's blocked, so we can't progress any deeper even if I wanted to. Alright, so we're going to get a few extra warps. Usually you'd have to fight your way out, of course, uh, because you're not allowed to get warp and exit until you're already promoted in the original game. But today we save some time. All right. So let's, uh, we've got enough time at least to turn the, uh, the ruby in and go visit Sarda. This is unusual. There's not supposed to be Ankeg slash peds in uh, the Melmond area. That's, that's crazy. Who let those guys over here? Uh, I like the shuffle to uh, overworld encounters. I think it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the holy water I believe is like Dira, so uh, harm two basically. I think uh, you can buy them somewhere. So if you're if you're really worried about undead encounters, um, there's a pretty good item that you can just pick up pretty easily, and will wipe out most low level undead encounters. I think. And because it works on uh, evil as well, it's quite useful. Alright, here, have your ruby. Let me through. Naked titan dude. Alright, let's just blip. Blip. Blast. Slip. It's it's a double, uh, double word. Hey, the axe that's great. And a free mithril helm. That's why I didn't buy three of everything, because I figured... They'll probably give me a myth, at least one of each, right? And the chest I almost missed, just some money. Alright, so, um, the great axe is not that great. We'll probably just sell it. It's lots of damage, I guess. But I think it's worth a lot of money, so I might want the money more than anything else. Oh, of course, I bought three mithril helms, so that's a wasted, wasted money. Look, I never know... I never remember what these uh, chests are going to have, because I never check them very often. Ochre jellies are usually only on the bottom floor of the Earth Cave. 
What's interesting are the bottom two floors, I think, technically. Um, kind of interesting running into them in here. That's not a typical encounter either. So yeah, the encounter shuffle, or whatever you call it, but uh, they, they definitely mixed up the encounters for the mod. I'm pretty, pretty happy because we see some enemies that normally you almost never see. And uh, now you've got places you can run into them a little bit more reliably. I guess as long as the Hyenodons drop power pluses, we're always going to want to kill them. I think they did that in the vanilla Dawn of Souls, though, so that's not even that different. Probably like 1% chance, but any permanent stat up is pretty much worth it in my books. Alright, let's go say hello to the Sage, Mr. Sarda. Mr. Sada, <laughs> he's very sad. Um... I'm sure it's supposed to be Sarda. I don't know why they renamed him in the, in the remake. <laughs> anyway, with that, he gives us the Earth Rod. There's sort of a bit of a plot here where, like, Melman got destroyed by the vampire. And they're like, the Earth is rotting. You've got to save us, Light Warriors. And then we're like, sure, we'll go to the Earth Cave and kill him. And then we kill him. And then the Earth Rod doesn't stop. And then suddenly, like, Sarda is like, hey... It's because there's something evil or even... Oh, seriously? We got stunned and poisoned? Um, that's convenient. Uh, you know, like, there's something even deeper. You're gonna have to go back and do it all again. And you're like, great. A forced double dip into a dungeon. That's what everyone loves. But, uh, yeah, you know, like, it's all good. <laughs> there's, there's some stories, all I'm trying to say. I'm just excited because I'm listening to the Rebel Army theme from Final Fantasy 2. I feel like Melior is such a liability on this party. <laughs> All he does is take huge amounts of damage. Uh, and he does like... How, how's his intelligence here? 25... I mean, he does a little bit more damage than uh, Jade. But like, not even much. Like. Let me just see how much damage pain will do for the two of them here, just just for interest's sake. Meliar gets uh, between 50 and 100, depending on the luck. And 72, so maybe maybe he does 20% more damage, I don't know. Chainmail, not good. Okay, well that was kind of trying. Now, on the plus side, we made 27,000 gold. Uh, we still can't cast level 5 magic, though. Uh, and we have some things to sell. So, I don't think the Coral Sword is that good, and I'd rather have 3,000 gold. Definitely don't need Leather Shields. Great Axe! Ah, sorry, Great Axe. Unfortunately, I bought too many Mithril Helms. Still not sure about this rune blade. I have a feeling I'm going to equip it on somebody for the lich fight, and that's probably the last we'll ever use it. Oh, it was the Viking axe I was thinking of. The Viking axe is better than the great axe. Well, well, yeah. I mean, you know, at least it's got some accuracy. Um, you wanted anything? You want the mithril axe? So I've actually got like a fair bit of money now. Ooh, what am I going to spend my money on, guys? I could buy one elven cloak, <laughs> spend all my money on Melior and buy him a cloak. I don't even know if it's worth it. Armor-wise, we're pretty good for the front three. I mean, I could buy one more upgrade for uh, Jade, but like those guys are doing fine. I don't think I need to spend money on their armor, and, and Melior is the one that's really fragile. And then, like, weapon-wise, it wouldn't be a bad idea to upgrade someone's attack power. I think the Mithril Axe is the highest damage weapon available at this store. Well, no, the Great Sword is higher damage. And it's effective against giants, so if you want to farm against giants, that's... But it's very expensive. Hmm. We're gonna have access to Flame and Ice Swords pretty soon. Oh, am I going to regret going to Elfland and buying a very expensive cloak for someone that gets basically no magic or no defense at all? I feel like this is a ton of money and it's probably not even going to be that good. Let's use the secret entrance to Elfland that nobody ever uses. <laughs> and um, 
Actually, while we're here, Jade should get some level 4 magic. Let's spend that money first. Uh, more damaging magic. Temper is nice. Confuse, I don't care too much about. I don't know very many times, like... Oh, he can learn Null Frost as well. Sadly, he can't learn Arrow or Healer Up. He can learn Null Frost. Interesting that he can learn some white magic. I'm actually going to give it to him, because I'm pretty sure the Lich will know uh, Blizzara. And that's the next challenge, so at least for the next boss, we'll have access to all three elemental having. And then we can use Temper to buff Victus if we need to. And Meliar can be on heal duty if we need to. And I'll move Clarity over eventually once once uh, Beret gets there. That's okay. I'm I think my, my low-level magic strategy is working mostly. Um, so then... Is it worth to discuss... Oh, alright, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. <laughs> so much money. So compared to a Mithril Shield, it's better than a Mithril Shield by one. Uh, if you can buy a Mithril Shield, just use that. But if you can't, hey, look at that. That's like... Uh, well, it's not quite doubling his defense, but it's significantly better. Yeah, I, I kind of think that was worth it. Now Jade is the next target for armor up. Maybe I'll buy him some Mithril Gloves or something. Or Watchman's... I should buy him the Watchman's Mail. I've got nothing left to sell, right? Well... <laughs> Um, well, <laughs> I think what I'm going to do, instead of just buying Watchman Mail, which is obsolete as soon as we get an extra set of Mithril Mail or something better, what we could do is a efficient upgrade and get two upgrades at once. And if we just sell off that sword that I'm not really even equipping... I could have just afford to buy Mithril Mail, which is good because Beret is going to take more damage, like he'll take more more attacks than Jade, so keep his defense high. And then we can hand me down his upgrade, which is a pretty good upgrade. Also, Jade like has no evasion anyway, so he or she is just always going to get hit. And then... Well, if I could get 2,000 gold... Those are pretty expensive, aren't they? You know what? I don't need cottages. Tents are just as good for now, because I think tents... It's only partially, but it's probably like 100 MP or something. It's, it's kind of a number like that. Cottages are just max MP, but for now, tents are more uh, efficient spending anyway. Yeah, you know what? I'm okay with this. So we got some good armor upgrades. The reason why I was kind of deciding to focus on defense is, um, well, it's because of how hard those, um, minotaurs hit. The zomb- or the bulls from- from Final Fantasy 1. And if they're doing, like, pretty high damage to- to Victus with his 45 defense, I mean, they were basically just gonna one-shot Meliar. So at least now with 23 defense and actually higher evasion, uh, he might- he might have a better, uh, long-term survivability. Yeah, I think that was an okay decision. I mean, that Elven Cloak was not cheap. <laughs> Spent all my money. Now I'm not, like, he'll get one level up and uh, he'll have access to, I'm just, I'm just guessing, but he'll probably get access to level five magic in one more level, or very soon anyway. And then I'll be very upset because I won't have any money for spells. But <laughs> hopefully we get some more money when we go back to the Earth Cave. All right, anyway, I guess I need to end the episode here for now. Um, we're a little bit light on weapons, but we're a little bit heavy on armor now. We spent some money on armor, and, um, I like Victus's attack power. That's looking good. Lots of damage. How's, uh, just for interest's sake, still only gets two attacks. Uh, I'm pretty sure by now, normally you'd be getting three or three attacks in the original game, if not four. So the balance is definitely fewer total attacks.
wonder where he's getting all that extra damage. 10 strength. It used to be 1 damage per 2 points of strength. But it's definitely not anymore. Because the Werebuster isn't much stronger than the Longsword, right? Just, just, hold on. Bear with me, I'm curious. So he gets 2 from that, but he still has 8 more, 18 more damage. <laughs> Knights are just really good at busting up the, the werewolves. Well, all I want to do is uh, get back to the entrance to Earth Cave, and then next episode, we will uh, take, a, take a run at the Lich. Now, I'm not super confident we're going to be able to kill her easily, or him, or whatever. It's, you know, it's, it's a Lich. Um, we don't even have access to level 5 magic, which is your benchmark for... Melmun sells level 5 magic. You should probably have level 5 magic for the next dungeon after it. Um, but, other than that, you know, we're doing okay. Pretty, pretty well equipped, I would say. Alright, folks. That was a, 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 a difficult start to this dungeon. Hopefully the second attempt at Earth Cave goes a little bit smoother. Because I don't want to spend too much time in here. And hopefully I don't have to do any level grinding. But, you know, I'll do that if I have to. That's fine. Alright, anyway, that's all for today, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't worry, we didn't die. We, uh, we're still alive. And I'll see you next time for more um, Mod of Balance for uh, Final Fantasy 1. I'm definitely enjoying it. I, uh, I enjoy the... Uh, overall, I really do like the switches it makes to the game. The little tweaks and balance changes. Um, I may not be a fan of all 12 classes, but that's... Just because I have preferences doesn't mean it's a bad mod, because... Some of the 12 are not the kind of classes I like. It's all good. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time.